Hello everybody, welcome back. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, before I get started, I gotta let y'all know, got my Trump cap today, MAGA baby. Wearing this right now, I feel an awful lot like Brandon Tatum. So, like this video, comment on this video, share this video, let's get into this. Thanks, Brandon. So, as much as I'm doing these videos, to deliver content and information that I think is crucially important. I'm also doing these videos to challenge myself to develop some new skills and more or less be useful. I am open to any and all criticism and comments you have about the content that I'm talking about and the quality of the videos that I'm producing. That being said, Today's topic is on gaslighting and projection. So let's start by defining our terms. Let's start with projection as that's the ultimate end goal of these narcissistic and sociopathic abusers that we're going to be talking about. Projection is, is when these abusers they get to offload their negative feelings or their negative intentions onto another individual. So someone who is a cheater is going to do their best to offload those negative behaviors onto their spouse and they're going to accuse them of cheating or being unfaithful. Someone who is extremely prejudiced is going to do their best to put that onto somebody else, they're going to call these people racist, bigots, sexist, uh, people who are fat shame, uh, claim to be fat shamed and slut shamed. The people who can't keep food out of their mouth and can't keep it in their pants are ultimately doing their best to get rid of these negative feelings by putting them onto other people. Gaslighting then becomes the method by which these abusers project these negative feelings onto people. Normal, healthy individuals are not just going to allow someone to make these claims, make these accusations without some pushback. So these abusers look really hard to find the right kind of subject for their experiment. The gaslighting itself is a systemic way of invalidating the victim's ability to experience their own emotions, to understand their own wants and needs, and takes away their ability to act in what is actually the reality of the world. The end result of this abuse is essentially the narcissist's perfect Frankenstein enabler. The victim has no agency of their own life anymore at this point. Up is down, black is white, in is out. They are completely dependent on the abuser to give them cues on how to act in the real world. This absolute dependency is the equivalent of affirmation and validation to this narcissistic abuser and it's a perfect narcissistic supply. They have to do this because they're hiding from their own shameful and out of control inner world. Essentially, they're using this victim as a shield. The abuser hates themselves for having these thoughts and feelings in the first place, and they hate their victim even more for being so easy to bamboozle. I like to think of it as the abuser has put their victim into some messed up version of the Truman Show, which is written by, directed by, produced by, starred by this narcissist or sociopath. The abuser is going to do everything that they can to control the program. They're going to control the cast, meaning that they're going to try to isolate you from outside influences like friends and other family. If they're unable to do that, they're going to uh, give these other actors their screen direction. So they're going to tell them things about you that are not true. They're also going to 
uh, change the script on you altogether by claiming that their actions never took place and essentially they win by making the victim feel completely crazy. So this all happened to me throughout my childhood and even into my early adult life. I was abused heavily and again one of the key things about gaslighting is it removes your autonomy it takes away your ability to be an independent actor in the world and it requires you to get the way that you're supposed to feel and behave and think from an outside source and so because of that I was attracted to people who were willing to give me this direction I was an unwilling actor in someone else's program and I didn't even know it and in my opinion that's what led me down the path of becoming a progressive liberal is that myself and people in this position were victims of this abuse and I certainly didn't understand or even realize that I had the ability to take control of my own life. Mainstream media takes the place of the abuser. Conservatism encourages people to have free thought and to decide what is best for themselves. And to someone who has suffered this kind of gaslighting abuse, that's the same thing as asking them to divide by zero. Abuse victims uh, have grown up and become adults, only they haven't shed their abuser. They have displaced it from being their parent or their caregiver or someone who's close to them to the mainstream media who acts in the same way, projecting these negative feelings, these negative intentions onto these people in order to cover up for their own bad behavior. Eventually, something will happen or something will be said and the cognitive dissonance just becomes too great. At that point, there are two options. The first option is to become self-destructive and pick up bad habits, drinking, addictive drug use, violence, like rioting and looting. And the second option is that you stand, hold your ground, and face the painful truth. I chose the second option and I'm grateful to credit my success at overcoming a lot of this gaslighting with two specific practices. Meditation and being still and developing the skill, because it is a skill, of being the casual observer of your thoughts without judgment, without any uh, agenda against myself or anyone else, really gave me the ability to separate what was the gaslighting inside of me, what were those messages from my abuser, and what were the actual thoughts, feelings, wants, needs, that I had and so after practicing that for quite some time the next logical step and thing number two is that I began to question everything and so all of these thoughts I would hit with a hammer until I could break them and if I can't break them then I know now that that's something that is within me so questions like, where did this come from? Why would I believe this? What's the evidence for or against this? Asking yourself, asking myself those open-ended questions and being willing to have an answer, regardless of how painful that answer was, is truly what separates, well, a codependent from a narcissist or a sociopath. So thanks again for listening to me ramble about this for a while and comment, share, like, subscribe.
See you soon.